Hey, everybody. It uh, looks like uh, you guys are on here. And uh, I'm Robbie Dawkins, of course. And this is my son, Isaiah. Isaiah, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing really good. Doing really good today. How good. are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing during the pandemic? What's that? What's that like for you? Isaiah, just so everybody knows. Oh, Lord. He is at <laughs> School of Supernatural Ministry. We call it BSSM. So what does that look like? What's your daily routine look like? <clears throat> um, well, so all of the students, the first and the second years, have a lot more actual classes than me as a third year student. Okay. So they do classes, they do their main classes, their main session classes daily, um, Monday through Thursday. And me, I have usually our revival group meeting, which is once a week. We'll do that on Mondays. Um, yesterday, we didn't have school. Uh, and then Tuesday, I have a, I have a two-hour class from 9 to 11 uh, that I do online streaming for. They give us a, they give us a live stream link on, on our school website. And so I click that, watch that. And then Wednesdays, we also have uh, – I, I am a third year in the first-year environment, in the first-year school environment. So we, I have a special training for uh, third years who are in the first-year environment on Wednesdays. And then – and then I just check in with my students regularly, see how they're doing. So it's it's pretty much uh, business as usual, except everyone's at home <laughs> and what just about, doing online streaming. What about your uh, what about your uh, like work? What what kind of job are you doing right now while you're in Bible college? Yeah, right now I'm working for uh, I'm working for DoorDash. Uh, so I just do food yeah. delivery through, through an app. Job right there. Uh, <laughs> it's good right now. Everyone's ordering food because they're too afraid to leave the house. So, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> do, so that's doing well right now. I'm very happy with that. But, very, very but yeah, good. I've been working regularly. So, yeah. That's good. How many hours have you gotten in, like in a week uh, with DoorDash? Um, well, we pretty much schedule our, our own hours so we can work like however many we want. Uh, I mainly work on the weekends because that's when it's busiest. Um, but I'm working later today. I'm working tomorrow. So I would say usually I work like maybe 20, 25 hours a week. And that about, that about covers everything actually. So cool. Awesome. So, yeah. Well, hey, you guys who are watching, uh, you, some of you already do this. Petro's already saying from New Zealand and also Anne from the UK, uh, guys, let us know from where you're at. Obviously some of, uh, uh, Isaiah's BSSM buds are on here. Clark Moore and uh, Alyssa. Looks like she's she's from there, and so probably some Re Reba, I guess. Uh, yeah, Reba. Nice name, Reba. Uh, but oh, cool! Somebody from Holland, South Carolina. But Isaiah, so tell us, um, mm -hmm. and feel free to share this too uh, if you guys want. Uh, tell us, you know, in in this, what was it like growing up? in our home, what was it like? It was, uh, I mean, it, with, with all of you boys, whenever I ask any of this and we're like, um, ever video or filming or, you know, everybody, when we've let it known that we've been working on a documentary for the years that's gonna be mm -hmm. coming out this year. But uh, you guys' answer was all the, always the same of uh, it, <laughs> of it was normal because to you, everything yeah. was normal. <laughs> Uh, that that what we were going through and everything, but just talk to us a little bit about that. Talk to us a little bit. Um. Well, yeah. Uh, we would. It was. It was kind of. Yeah. It was really like our normal. But um, mom, when I started everything. going to, huh? Mom kept everything normal. Mom, <laughs> she did the best she could. Yeah. <laughs> but she did an amazing job. I love mom. She did. Um, Fantastic job. She. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, just our normal was, um, just going out and evangelizing and like you, when you travel, like when you would go to a conference, we wouldn't go with you every time, but we would go with you sometimes, sometimes to like youth conferences or just even adult conferences. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I remember there were times you would have us lead teams. And so I was like maybe 13 at the time and I was leading a, <laughs> a team of people who are all over like 35 and I'm just, and they, 
Leading someone that had never done it before. Greets the evangelism. Like leading a team, yeah, for evangelism, leading an evangelism team. I was like 13. And I'm just thinking, like, you guys have never done this before? Because <laughs> it was because it was normal. And so it was our normal. Um, but yeah, it was definitely interesting. Like, it was definitely interesting kind of seeing what other people's normal was and then seeing what was normal for us. And like our I mean, I there was never there was never a, a point in my life where I wasn't aware that there was uh, that there was like a spiritual realm and that all of that stuff was very real. Like I always, I always believed that uh, angels were real, that, that demons were real. I mean, we grew up in Aurora, and it was very there was a there's a lot of stuff there. So, well, but, talk, um, maybe talk a little bit about some of that. Some of the yeah. some of the uh, before you do, let me let me let me lighten okay. the situation by telling a funny story. Okay. So I say he was about uh, okay. he was about nine months, maybe a year old, and uh, of course as you know, his older brothers who were, uh, one of them was two and a half years older and the other one was, uh, you know, was uh, four years older, four and a half years older than he was. But uh, of course, all kids, you know, the, one of their favorite things to do is McDonald's. And so uh, we were going and getting McDonald's. Isaiah was was still, uh, he, was, he was still kind of on baby food a little bit, but he would eat some uh, food. And so, uh, we we one night uh, went to McDonald's and we didn't get to do that that often. We had, you know were, were urban community and so you know we had to really budget and then we could go out to eat. But anyway, uh, but we brought some food back and we had the boys, his older brothers Judah and Micah had put their their sandwiches and their um, they had put their uh, uh, fries and things over on on the table. And Isaiah at at nine months or a year, mom would remember better. He would run over to the table, and when the his brothers were talking to us or distracted, he would grab like a couple of fries and run away. And he was shoving them in his mouth, and it was purely because he was terrified that that his brothers were going to take it away from him. And I was like, "This is the survival of the fittest of growing up in a home full of boys." And Isaiah had to get a few fries to survive. <laughs> <laughs> and then he would, and then he would sneak over, and he'd grab a few and run, and he would run away, you know, eating them as he went. And so it was, it was, uh, and and uh, my wife Angie turned and looked at me and said, "He's stealing fries." I said, "Stealing them? He's trying to just get some. There's no stealing on. He's just trying to eat." <laughs> Poor kid. But anyway, it's one of my fondest memories uh, of you. And of course, one of my most tragic memories. How about this one, Isaiah? Do you remember this one when we were in the Dominican Republic together? You were like seven years old. Do you remember? I was eight. You were eight years old. And I, yep. we I remember the beach <laughs> and I put, I put sunscreen on him. And, but the waves in the Dominican Republic were so strong. We were in, like, they're huge. The Bay Area. And, and so these waves were hitting him and just washing off all the sunscreen. Well, for the rest of the day, I forgot to reapply sunscreen. So by that night, this poor child was so burned and I felt <laughs> horrible. And he was just, he, he was really not, I hope you've had inner healing or so for this. <laughs> but it's not really a big complainer or anything. And I'm applying like lathering uh, uh, aloe vera all over his skin uh, just just to help him survive the night. And at one point he just looks at me and he says, and he hadn't complained the entire time, but he looks at me and he goes, dad, it would have been a good idea if you would have applied more sunscreen. <laughs> and I was like, I know. <laughs> I started tearing up because I felt so bad. So that, there was there was one of my big fails as a dad right there. I'm sure there's lists and lists of others, but um, but he did get to go to the Dominican. He got it. it. Made a good story. What's that? <laughs> it made a good it made for a good story. It made a great <laughs> painful story and one that I agonized over. All the time. When I first remember <laughs> his little face, I literally, I start, I start feeling emotional, and I want to cry because I felt so bad for him. Because eight, he was insane. So anyway, 
<laughs> all right, now that we got all yeah. that out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, <it's> so hard. <laughs> hey, tell us, uh, tell us, you, you know, you said there was a lot of, and, and your brothers have all talked about this too, that there was a lot of, uh, you said there was a lot of incredible, great things. And a lot of people don't realize that mm -hmm. when you're around the miraculous a lot, as we were as a family, we were yeah. people, you boys from an early age were seeing deliverances, you were seeing demons flee people, you were seeing um, people get set free from drugs. You were, you saw, uh, you know, mm -hmm. people who were, uh, you, you know, you had, you went through hard times too. You went through persecution uh, in your school. Um, but you know, one of the things you were starting to say is you were talking about, I think you were starting to talk about some of the demonic attacks and stuff. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Tell us like, cause a lot of people don't realize when you're doing great things for God and you're doing that, there's a lot of, of, of backlash that the devil does. There's a lot of backlash that, uh, mm -hmm. does. And your brother, Judith, your brother Micah talked about it, but what maybe share with us a little bit, um, you know, just what your experience was. Yeah, I mean, like I totally believe that. Um, uh, I, <laughs> when, yeah, when you're doing great things for the kingdom, like you said, um, how the enemy tries to attack you, and even also like when you when he sees like what you're going to do, because um, uh, thankfully what. What happened to me never never stopped it, it never stopped me from living as uh, as a Christian. It never stopped me from living as a believer. Um, but yeah, some of the stuff uh, from a very young age. Uh, there were there were times when I would uh, I would definitely experience uh, the demonic, even just like while I'd be in my room or just um, just at home. There would be times like I would just see like a figure kind of move across the hallway. And like, I, I would see that and just instantly be terrified. And that made me like, just scared of any of that kind of stuff. And so, um, <laughs> and I remember when I was younger, I loved hearing your stories of like deliverance and everything. Cause I'm, cause it kind of like fed into the whole thing of like, oh man, yeah, it's getting back at them for, <laughs> for scaring me <laughs> and everything. Making the um, enemy pay for that. But yeah. growing up, taking a toll. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think. Some of the most impactful years for me in my life were definitely when I was in uh, junior high school. So from the ages of like 11 to 13, um, those were really shaping years for me uh, in a lot of ways. They were painful years, but like there were a lot of ways because I just got, um, I got really bullied a lot when I was in sixth grade, like 11 years old. That was probably, those, that, prob that year was probably one of the worst that I'd ever lived because mm -hmm. like it was just constant like daily thing of just getting bullied. Um, just because I was like, uh, just because I was an, I was an odd kid, not going to lie. <laughs> I was like, um, I was just a, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, I was a nerdy kid, but like, I just, uh, I got, I got bullied for just some random things. And sometimes it just wouldn't even make sense. Like what was happening, like looking back on it now, it's like, really, I did like nothing to not that anyone ever deserves it but it's like no, i did nothing to warrant that i did nothing that like That's so gave people that kind of opportunity and so like it was just it was just like out of nowhere and i'm like why is this happening and uh, and you explained it persecution i mean that's part of what i'm talking yeah about. i mean i know there were other forms of it in the high school <clears throat> yeah especially you know even even back mm -hmm. then in middle school and stuff like that and in early elementary school you guys were going through these things yeah of the, so i'm sorry go ahead yeah you're fine um yeah there was there uh, some of the things that were really harsh was um uh one guy that one kid that i consider my, uh, my best friend at the time when i was that age uh i just felt a lot of betrayal from him mm -hmm. because he uh he was a close friend of mine and i won't get into a lot of details but he was basically friends with me and one of the guys was, uh who was kind of bullying me Mm -hmm. And um, he he didn't know what to do, and so it was just kind of a neutral party, and that was one thing that really hurt me. Um, but like, uh, yeah, just there was a lot of there was a lot of bullying, a lot of persecution, and that just made me afraid of people. Um, like that just made me afraid of people in general, because I'm like, oh, if I get close to people, they'll hurt me. Mm -hmm. And so that really like made me distance myself and become really antisocial. 
uh, to the point that in uh, in seventh grade, the next year I was uh, I was homeschooled because I just I didn't want to be around anyone there. Like I was too afraid. Yeah. And so. That uh, was your, yeah, that's some of the. I remember that really <laughs> all that time in your life. That was really a really hard time. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, one of the things that, uh, you, you know, that how, how I would describe you was it wasn't that you were nerdy. It was that you were um, and you've always been this way. You've always sort of thought mm -hmm. outside of the box and didn't go with mainstream you yeah. were you had your own style of creative. I remember the years and years of Doctor was it Doctor No or Doctor Doctor Who. Doctor Who. <laughs> and yeah. And Isaiah, was, yeah. Isaiah, what did you want the one Christmas? Do you remember? <laughs> oh man. Please share uh, this. I, I fully remember. No, no, no. I I that's totally fine. Uh yeah, I wanted um there's a few things I wanted. One of them I wanted was a trench coat because of Doctor Who. Yes. Um, yep. And I got it. And I was yeah. very happy. And I wore it to school a few times. <laughs> he wanted a, a what? A top hat. Oh yeah. I wanted a top hat. Yep. Uh, and, and top, yeah. <laughs> All this stuff. Just like <laughs> that, those things were so endearing for your mother and I. We loved the fact mm. that you were just yourself, that you were, mm. you know, um, you know, that, that you weren't trying to be your brothers. Uh, but anyway, mm. yeah, I want you to uh, to go back. Tell tell us about what were some of the God encounters that you had in your life early on, where you had an experience uh, that you could talk about. Um, um, I'd probably say some of the biggest, uh, this is like some of the biggest things. Tell, so just to let them know. This just is say again. I'm sorry. I said, this is unrehearsed. It's just, I'm okay. Yeah. 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 It's unrehearsed. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say some of the biggest ways that I actually like, uh, some of them were definitely when I would go with you to conferences and just like feel the presence and like feel God just like in the room and everything. And I remember, um, I remember there's one time even uh, just because of, I would hear so many stories that you would talk about, about Mima, your mother. Um, mm -hmm. And like I would, and you, you always talked about her, like she's the most godly woman you knew and everything. Yeah. And um, that was, that, that always really impacted me. Cause I never, I never really like met her except when I was like a baby. Um, and so uh, that, that always impacted me. And I remember one time we went to, uh, we went to a youth conference and, uh, and like just the presence of God was so heavy. Holy Spirit had totally filled the room. And um, I don't necessarily know if this happened. I can't remember if this actually manifested in the physical, but I, I feel I'm, I'm fairly, I remember there being, I remember seeing a glory cloud, like mm -hmm. actually in the room at the time. And I don't know if I was the only one who could see it or if other people could see it, but I remember that. And in that moment, I thought of, I thought of Mima and how you would talk about her and everything. And I just felt that, and even not ever having met her, I just knew that was just like, I, I really felt it was like the presence of just like, just overwhelming love. Mm. And that really, like, that's something that stuck with me like all these years as like one of my, one of my main encounters. Um, <clears throat> but even apart from like the conferences and everything, I'd probably say some of the best uh, encounters I've had with God were actually just with his people, like with other with other Christians, with friends that were totally like divine, divine appointments with people, um, divine, divine, just like, <laughs> just God appointed friendships. I was, I was friends with people that like I needed just in my life at that time to speak into my life. Uh, some of them actually weren't even Christians. They were just people there who knew how to speak into other people's lives. And those were some of the biggest things for me that really impacted me. It was just the people around me. Mm. So and that was throughout that was in middle school and I was also in high school really a lot and still to this day like <laughs> like I experienced God through through my closest friends and like even not just my close friends I experienced God through all my friends and it's just it's amazing. Wow. So do you remember when you were filled with the Holy Spirit? And began I do remember. What was happening? I do remember that. I, that I <laughs> um. 
<clears throat> at the time I really didn't know what was happening because I didn't necessarily oh, feel that? like, huh? Do you remember where it was at? I do remember. I remember the exact night. It was in my bedroom. Yeah. You, were with, you were there with me. We were sitting on my bed yeah. in my bedroom. I, I remember. I was there and I prayed for you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the story though, it's so good. This is I love. I tell this story so many times when I go places. Go ahead, tell them. That's a good. Okay. So I tell the, the whole the whole story, the backstory as well, or uh, just the just that point on. It's up, it's it's up to it's it's it, it, whatever you feel comfortable with. That's fine. Um. <clears throat> wow. <You're>, you <laughs> say this. You were going through a really hard time. And there was, were yeah, yeah, real demonic was, things that were happening in our house yeah. that the enemy was really <sighs> in our family with. Really, yeah, in in just a lot of ways, and I was, I was, I think I was the at that time I was taking a lot of the brunt of it. I was taking like yeah. the end of the brunt of it, and I remember the bullseye on you. That was for sure. Yeah, and yeah, it, and it was, certainly wasn't by your doing. It was just him targeting yeah. you because he sees the great man of God that you are. I know that. Mm. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and so no, you're good. Um, yeah, I was just going through a really, really hard time, and um, and uh, I was kind of. I remember I was sitting uh, at that time. My bedroom, my bedroom was uh, in the basement, and I wanted it to be down there because I thought it was super cool. I'm like, man, <laughs> I get to have my bedroom in the basement. Yeah. Um, and so, but I remember I was sitting on my bed, just like uh, just thinking about what was going on. And you came in the room, and. Um, and at that point, like uh, you, you asked me if I, if I, if I wanted to be like filled with the holy with the Holy Ghost and everything. And at that I point, like I jump in. I remember at that time, yeah. really feeling like <clears throat> you needed power in your life because mm -hmm. of the attacks and everything that you needed to be able to break yeah. the demonic and break the power, you know, that was afflicting yeah. your life. But anyway, and so I. I was encouraging you without pushing too hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never felt, I right. never felt pressured. I never felt unwanted pressure into anything that you, that you uh, invited us to do. I never felt that. Um, I always, I always felt empowered. I always felt empowered into it and, and I wanted to do it. Um, but yeah, especially with that time, like I remember feeling like I felt peace and then I was kind of sitting there and I was thinking like, and then like I, I remember you, uh, you asked, you asked me about like, you, you tell me about speaking in tongues and everything. And I was, um, I was kind of sitting there and I'm just like, what, I don't know how the, <laughs> I don't know how this works. I've seen it before, but I've never done it before. So what do I do? <laughs> and I was just sitting there and I just started like, uh, pretty much copying like what I've heard you say <laughs> when you spoke in tongues. Um, and then it started to become like, I started just feeling more peace and even just like really. I started to feel a lot. I, I started to feel peace and also just like uh, I, I felt power in that moment. And like, there's just such a significant moment for me. It's one I'll never forget. I don't know if you remember so. that you kept, you kept you <clears throat> looking out of the corner of your eye. You would be like, you know, short about that, short about that. Yeah. And then you'd look out of the corner of your eye and you'd very good. And I was like, I said, if you're worried, if you're doing it right, it's okay. You are. And you said, no, that's not it. And I said, what is it? You said, I feel like I'm floating and I'm making sure I'm not literally floating. And uh, I remember that, yeah. It was so powerful because you kept you kept yeah. looking, you kept looking to the side and I was like, Why are you why are you looking to the side? And you're like, because I feel like I'm floating and I don't wanna mm -hmm. I don't literally float off the bed and float <laughs> and it was so powerful. But the, the spirit of God yeah. just all over you and the yeah. presence of God yeah. was all over you. But uh, yeah, I don't. Go yeah. ahead. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to float because I remember you. You telling the story of how, how when you were a kid, you you woke up and you were like this close to the ceiling, and I'm like, oh gosh, if I'm floating, then that well, means there's it, something wrong. Under <laughs> demonic power, that wasn't like <laughs> that was a demonic attack. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So I was just oh, make sure I didn't <laughs> make sure I didn't say something wrong. Like, God, am I doing this right? Uh -huh. Are you liking? It? Okay, <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's definitely one experience like I'll never forget, just because because of where I was at in my life and also what it did for my life, like in that. Yeah, so the real saving grace for sure in that time. Yeah.
really dark time. Yeah, totally. Tell us, tell us, uh, uh, tell us a little bit. Um, what to just what you know one one day if I could set this question up like this, um, yeah. My Andy, my wife had called and and she always does the mom thing when she's on there. You know, have you paid your utilities? Have you paid your rent? Yeah. Have you paid? Have you taken care of your phone? Have you done this? Have you done that? Is there gas in the yeah. car? Are you eating? You know, she's <laughs> always yeah. very. She's always the very practical one, and then, and and there was mm -hmm. things that you were lagging That's in. That's great. Like all upset about and concerned about, and then finally, I, she goes. She goes here. You need to talk to him. And I think she was wanting me to say, "Hey, are you know, are you paying me? <laughs> are you?" And. I just stopped and I said, hey, Isaiah, what's God speaking to you? You know, you're there, mm -hmm. you're at Bethel, you're in a, a place where God's presence is, is wonderful and people from all over the world come to and And what's yeah. speaking to you? What? And you said, well, dad, do you yeah. really want to know? And I said, of course I want to know. And what you said next blew my mind. And... Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that you can about speaking to because I know God is constantly speaking to you, Isaiah, and that's mm -hmm. constantly uh, bringing you to things, showing you things. But, you know, do you mind sharing with us about what the Lord had just revealed to you? Yeah. Or, or you could share about other things if you prefer to, but I, I, I it, that Don't, one, no, yeah. I mean, I wept and wept. Uh, after you had shared this, because it was so profound, yeah. powerful. <clears throat> yeah, no, I remember it so vividly. It's definitely, that's another, um, just kind of side note, I'm going to talk a lot about moments, because like, that's just something, I'm reading a book called The Power of Moments right now, but those are just things that are like, just to, how different moments just shape our entire lives. Like, mm -hmm. and this is definitely one of those, this is definitely one of those moments that really uh, just shifted my perspective in an area. Um, yeah, so I remember, um, I remember that, I remember that day. this was actually, this is a little, this is a little bit after, uh, it happened that I told you guys. Um, but it was just, I, man, God took me through this revelation process. It was over the course of a few hours as I actually was going to different places. Like I was in school in a main session. This was two years ago. Wow. It's just over two years ago, man. <laughs> it's crazy to think about. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I remember it was two years ago, um, Bill Johnson, he, he comes and speaks in BSSM uh, regularly, uh, and he was speaking in first year um, this one day, and uh, he was talking about, he was talking about uh, family, oh, what was it? he was talking about uh, inheritances on, and anointings on family lines, and um, as I was listening to that, it was a really good message, I loved it, as I was listening to that, God kind of spoke to me. And um, he said, he said, have you ever thought about uh, where you come from, like your family lines? And I'm just like, well, I mean, not really. <laughs> like I've heard, like I've, I've heard it before, but I, it wasn't something I'd actually like del uh, delved into, like and thought, like deeply thought about. <clears throat> and that was one thing God told me is he said, um, he said, I want you to, I want you to look into that, like think about that. And um, I'm like, well, I know. Um, I know that we, uh, I know we're like, uh, I know most about like my, my dad's and mom's side of the family and everything. Um, and, uh, and the one thing that God was really telling me in that moment, he's like, well, um, what about your grandpa? And, and that was something that was really kind of a touchy subject for me. Um, both my grandpas were, uh, in different ways were, uh, kind of struggled, um, with, with abuse in different, in, in different ways. But one of them. I was part, I had particularly uh, distanced myself from uh, just like emotionally, really emotionally. And, um, and uh, he was someone that I just, I didn't really want to have anything to do with mm -hmm. um, full honesty. <laughs> like yeah. um, I'd heard, I'd heard of some of the things he had done and I'd walked through a process uh, earlier that year. I'd walked through a Thank process you. of Thank you. For, both of our, both of my, mine and, and your mother's dads had struggled with <laughs> Of uh, issues mm -hmm. of sexual addiction and have been through yeah. uh, areas of that in their life and you know had had, yeah. had breakthroughs. So anyway, so that was part of you know and and then there was yeah both of them had battled being manipulative 
uh, mm. and, and you know, can could have and but people who <laughs> said they, they were even uh, verbally and, and could be spiritually abusive. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just yeah. to fill that that piece in for people. Well, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and so it was. Um, it was really. Uh, Totally forgot what. Oh, I remember. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd really distanced myself uh, from from my mom's dad, uh, really, uh, just emotionally and in my heart. And I walked th earlier that year. I'd walked through a forgiveness process because because um, during our during our prayer one of those days, they had actually um, they had called for it saying like, "Hey, this is a there's a there's a grace for forgiveness." And so I went and um, and so I took some time and like actually and I felt like God was saying, "Here, forgive your grandpa." And so I did, like in my heart, I forgave him. And I just like, um, I just like released him from, from, from my anger. Um, but in that moment, but back to the, back to that moment, back to the story in that moment, like God was saying here, I want you to look into what you can receive from your grandpa. And I was very, very like, no. Bill had been talking about inheritances. Right? Cause he had been talking about inheritances. He said, what can you, what, what's an anointing on your, on your grandpa's side and um, on your, on your mom's side and everything. And, um, I was just kind of like, I, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want anything from that God. Like, I don't know what I can get from that. Just like thinking of all the things he had done. And, um, and, uh, whew. uh, if I start crying, like that, just know that's probably going to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll probably cry too. Um, so powerful. Oh man. That's so God was, um, God was saying, you know, there's, uh, for everything he did, there's still what he did never suppressed uh, the anointing and the inheritance on that family line. And uh, whether you like it or not, you 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 come from both. You come from both of those family lines. You come from both your your dad and your mom and their sides of the family. And so there's something I have for you on both of those sides. And and I was just kind of like just sitting there rejecting it. Like I'm mm -hmm. sitting there just like no God. Like there's nothing for me there. There's nothing for me there, and it was just such an, it was just such an intense moment. Like this was, a lot of this was happening while I was in class, um, just sitting there thinking about it, and um, I remember, uh, I remember actually, um, after school had ended, I went and um, I was sitting out in the hallway of the of the school. Pretty much everyone had cleared out. Um, and I was just sitting there just thinking about all of this. And I remember one thing that I remember about, uh, grandpa is he was, uh, he was very, he was a very like, <laughs> in my mind, he was always very, very tall. And like, he was just someone who like, um, just towered over people. And I real, and then like, and I kind of looking back, I realized like, oh man, that was like, that was intentional. Like that wasn't, it wasn't a thing. It was a thing of like, you could tell when you knew when he was in the room, right when he walked in, but it was like an intimidation thing mm -hmm. is what I really felt. And so I was always like, I, a, a part of me was always scared of him. And so, <clears throat> and actually because of that, because I'm a big guy, I'm a tall guy. And um, I used to actually be afraid that people would, would look at me and think that I was just like a big scary dude and just, just not want to talk to me. Um, and like, that was, a, that was a very real fear of mine. Like not just like a not just like an like a recurring thought, but it was just like a genuine fear of mine. I was afraid that people would look at me and be scared of me because of that. <clears throat> and so I was just really thinking of that. And I remember right at that moment, right as I was thinking about all of this, um, my first year revival group pastor, his name's James Burke. His wife Lori came by. A kid was coming through the hallway. And um, she just came by and she came with a smile. She's like, Isaiah, hi, how are you? And it was just super, super sweet. Mm. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. Kind of in the middle of a crazy process right now. Um, and one of the things that she told me, I just was exactly what I needed to hear. She's super prophetic. Um, and she just told me, she's like, oh, man, it's so good to see you. And she said, you know, I just want to let you know that women feel safe around you. And that hit me so hard. Like that, that wrecked me. She's like, women feel safe around you. I feel safe around you as a sister. And I'm thankful for you as my brother. Mm -hmm. And like, that's just, like I said, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And then 
I was just sitting there in that. And then she was like, all right, hey, I have to go, but it's good. It was good seeing you. I'll see you later. Mm. And I'm just sitting there and I'm just thinking about that. And I'm like, wow, that is the exact thing I needed to hear in that moment. And I remember just God saying, like, see, like, <laughs> God said, you see how I see you? Like, do you know how I see you now? And, oh, man. And I'm just thinking about all of that. I'm just thinking about all of the stuff that, just all the stuff in that moment that I was that I was going through, and that I was that was just on my mind about inheritance and everything. And I remember, um, oh man, God, God showed me a picture. Uh, it was from from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> showed mm-hmm. me a scene from Lord of the Rings when um, when the elf when the elf king Elrond was um, was taking the broken the broken blade. Mm-hmm. And he was reforging it into a new sword. Mm-hmm. And like he was reforging it into a new sword and um, giving it to Aragorn, who, who, for those of you who don't know Lord of the Rings, uh, first of all, watch it. Second, <laughs> but, um, but in this part, um, uh, Aragorn was one of the main characters and he, his, he was ashamed of his great, 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 great grandfather because he was supposed to do something great, but he failed. And so... Um, and so Aragorn was ashamed of his family line because of that and rejected it. But then um, the Elf King Elrond came and brought the same sword that was broken from his great great grandfather and gave it to him. And like just in that moment, God was saying, this, and "God was saying, this is the this is the sword that your grandfather was given that was passed down to him. And though it was broken, I made it something new. And I'm giving it to you." And he said, "The same sword." that your grandfather raised against his family is the same sword that you're going to use to lead people into my kingdom. Wow. And into my love, into my heart. Wow. And I just, just wept in that moment. And he's just like, it was like, it felt like some kind of like knighting ceremony. He's like, do you take the sword? And I'm like, yes, I take the sword. Yeah. I take it. I accept that it's mine. Yeah. And that was just, that's one of the most significant moments of my life because then I realized like what legacy was mm-hmm. like one, I know like you're, <laughs> you're you you have a, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. Like that's, it was just something in that moment that like, I'll never, I'm never going to forget that because it impacted my life in such an amazing way. And I love changed my perspective. That God, you kept saying, I, I don't have, there's nothing that I want from him. And you said, well, let me show you what, uh, I, if it, correct me if I'm wrong, but what the redeemed uh, version of him looks like, what the redeemed inheritance of him looks like. And you were like, God, no, no, there's nothing redeemed. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. He, and, he, and he's almost like shouted at you and said, yes, look at your mother. She's, yeah. The redeemed yeah. She's the redeemed anointing. Yeah. Been redeemed and has not. Yeah. Lost. Look at your mother. Look at the strength of your mother. Yeah. Your mother has a very much that same strength that her father has, but used mm-hmm. it in in a righteous way and in a for the for the purpose of righteousness. And he was showing you that picture of 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 what that uh, what that brokenness yeah. what it redeemed and reforged that looks like, and it looks like your mother. And that was wow. I I just yeah. just whew. Man, I lost yeah. when you when you took the book. I know the story too well of of how God yeah. has, has redeemed and healed and done a yeah. restoration process. So what was your take yeah. from that? How what was that? What what did you uh, what did you feel uh, or, or or how did God did God speak any more to you or, or did you any more about him? Um the first thing that I really felt was tell your brothers. Cause like, I know that they, I know that they felt, they, they felt the very same way that I did. And I just, and I told them, I'm just like, guys, guys, we have to, we have to know this. I have to tell you what God just told me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told them, and I told them the whole thing. Cause I'm just like, no, they're like, they're equal. They're as, they're as much like as many parts of like mom and dad as I am. And so like, they're, and so they're in the same, they're, they have the same, like, anointing on them, the same inheritance in their lives and everything. And so I just needed to tell them, like, guys, guys, you need to, you need, you need to know what God told me. And so I told them and, um, 
and like I haven't gone super in depth with like which e with each of their own processes with that, but I just knew I'm like I just got I have to tell them what happened, like yeah, yeah, because it's like man, this is this is too this is too it's important to keep a secret. Family, really? Yeah, yeah. I told told everyone just because it's like guys, God gave me this amazing revelation, mm -hmm. and like this is going to shift entirely how we how we live our lives. And wow. so, and it did, and it definitely did for me. And so, <laughs> that, that's incredible. So, so yeah, um, anything mm -hmm. else you feel God speaking to you in these times, or yeah, you've shared um, a lot. And I want you to pray for everybody because I feel like there's a lot of people. You know, a couple of people have mentioned this on their comments on here that they're like, Man, <clears throat> that you're describing, you know, my family. You know, the the when you're mm. talking about brokenness and the the failing and and just so everybody knows uh, my dad in my books i've written about my dad's um uh while in ministry going through affairs and and my dad has wanted me to tell that story my dad has begged me to write that story he was not i wasn't uncovering uh, my publisher was like this is like a tell-all book and you're telling family secrets I said, no it's not that my father wants the story told because he wants people to be warned against the lies of the enemy and against the identity, yeah. which is what my and it's story. your story too. Yeah, it is. It is. It is our story as well. And so, yeah. um, and so, uh, you know, my father was like, please tell, you know, please do that because it's so, um, you know, who, who, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that they, they really want, uh, they need that, but there's some there's some people here that are their families work for them. We go too far. I just at some point want to have you just pray for any of those who are yeah who feel like that they have broken swords that God wants to reforge. But is there anything else? Yeah. That give you if there's anything else that you're just hearing God speak or God say in this. Yeah. Moment? Well, well, just right in this moment, actually, I. I really started uh, a few weeks ago in our, uh, in one of our revival group meetings, I think it was, gosh, it was, it was like two weeks ago or something. Um, my, my mentor this year, Jeremy Gonzalez, um, one of the things that he was talking about was um, owning your story yeah. and like owning what God has done in your life and everything. And I think that's just, that was one of the things that really, that really actually led me into that revelation and that healing mm -hmm. um, from everything that, uh, that had happened. Like, uh, from my grandpa and everything was like not not accepting it as truth but owning it as this is where this is the fruit this is like I'm the fruit of I'm the fruit of this and this is something that I can redeem like what happens is something that God I'm sorry I can't redeem it God can redeem it but I can walk out the redemption like that God that God uses and so I think that's one of the biggest things um just how I just how I just said like it's um with what happened with your dad like it's your story too um I think that's one of the biggest things is like knowing that uh like we're all we're all born we're all born with some kind of story even if we're even if you're not even like a month like a day old yet like you there's a story behind who you came who who you came who you are like there's a story of who you are from your mom and dad and like that goes really important into like like that, that that's the importance of legacy is that who you are is like comes down from generation to generation and just <clears throat> and I didn't <laughs> it's it's funny because like um because if you if you haven't heard my dad speak <laughs> um one of his one of his biggest passions is legacy and like it's become one of my biggest passions because that moment that I had like with the I just call it my sword story um. <laughs> Good. Um, that moment that I had, that moment that I, that I had was when I realized the importance of like legacy and where you came from, uh, like the family lines that you came from and who, like that, who you are is not necessarily your family, but your family is a big part of who you are. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like that's not, it's not your entire identity, but at the same time, it's part of who you, it's hard, it's part of how you came to be. And so, and that's one thing is like, if like I, because I dealt with a lot of shame, I dealt with a lot of shame from, um, from like my family's past, like the other generation before my parents, I dealt with a lot of shame from that, but it wasn't until like, I realized like, no, that like, <clears throat> even though that wasn't God's plan, uh, Romans 8, 28, 
we know all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Because of like, because of what the people who were involved, what, because of what the next generation did with what happened before them, that was like, that's when everything was redeemed. God turned it to good because we, because we took action. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that I'm really, that I'm really feeling and that I'm really feeling God speak into is, um, is that where you come from is important. Even if you're, even if, even if right now you're ashamed of where you come from, because it's part of who you are. Like your, your family line is part of who you are and your spiritual bloodline is part of who you are. So that's, that's just really what I was feeling. Wow. Um, just in that moment on that. That's so. so good. That's so good. I, Isaiah, would you just take a moment and just pray for anybody uh, that maybe they're going through just a broken sword family or they're just, yeah. they're having yeah. that sense of that. There's just a family that have, you know, failures of the past or people that have been abusive in their past, you know, um, mm. I remember watching, you know, my dad, you know, uh, go through a, a time of awakening and, and begin to realize that all the pain that he had caused and, you know, through, uh, adultery and the, how the pain that he had caused through, um, you know, not being kind to people and, and just begin mm. to repent and publicly came forward. Many yeah. times. Uh, but you know, there's some people out there that have those family history with, with again broken sores that need to be reforged. Would you just pray over them? Yeah. Yeah. Father God, right now, I thank you that you were the God that restores everything. Oof. <laughs> Lord, I pray that just um just all the broken swords, all the broken swords in families, all the broken swords, all the broken swords just in everyone's lives, be it family, be it like where where they feel like they just don't have mm, where they feel like they don't have authority, they don't have power over, they don't have the ability to to take hold and stand firm in it. Lord, I pray that you just give them that strength, just fill them up with that. And Lord, I pray that you just restore them to who they're always supposed to be. Yes. Mm. And I pray that just family reconciliation will happen, that there will just be so many testimonies out of this story, just after this story from this Facebook Live, of just restoration in families, restoration in family lines, restoration... Uh, of inheritances, restorations, and anointings just right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you so much for each and every person watching, for the people who are going to watch this later, who are going to just watch this at any point, and I just bless them. Ooh, I just bless them in that area that they were just, that everything that was taken, everything that they that they feel was, was, uh, was like suppressed mm. by actions of the generation before them or, the mo- or generations before them. Uh, I pray that you would just restore that, restore, restore in them, and restore what was what was broken yes. by generations before, or even just in the current generation, what was broken. I pray that you would just restore it and make it something entirely new. Yes, mm, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for who you are and who you are to all of us. Thank you for each and every person and who you made them to be and who you're growing them to be, Lord. And I bless each and every one of them in Jesus' name. (sighs) Father, just anyone who's just uh, been ashamed of the brokenness in their story, I just pray that that shame be removed and be broken off Mm. of them. They be released uh, uh, and and be uh, totally uh, released from them in in Jesus' name. Uh, Father, that they would just be uh, like all of that suppressed uh, spiritual uh, oppression and suppression would just be broken off and just total liberty. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you do everything is redemptive in your hands. You can redeem anything in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well, your Aunt Debbie's watching. Mm. Here, so you may want to say hi to her. She said hi, I did a shout out to you. Hi, Aunt Debbie. <laughs> we love, yeah, you know, my boys love their aunts. Um, Isaiah, I bless you as a man of God. I bless you as a man with the spirit and the favor of the Lord is on your life. I bless you as one that the Father and it blesses the Father of, in heaven, blesses. I bless you. I bless the generations that will come out of you. I bless the marriage that you will have. 
I bless you as a great man of God. And I release to you all the blessings of a father, of the natural father, of the heavenly father. And I thank God for you, Isaiah, that you're a treasure of God, that you are one that is uncompromising, unyielding. And when others, I would watch your friends try to pressure you to cave to sin, and he would stand up and say no. And I know there are times that all of us slip and struggle in that, but I would watch you stand up as a mighty man of God and say, no, I'm not going to bow to that idol of the flesh or of sin. And I bless you in that. I bless you, mighty man of God. And I declare the spirit of God on you and the favor of the Lord on you and that generations will come out of you that will be blessed. And I release that to you. The Father's blessing. I bless you as your Father, and I bless you as a mighty man of God, that the favor of God is on, and that the Father in heaven smiles down on you and calls you a blessed son. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless you, my son. I bless you. And I bless all of those that are lacking in a Father's blessing, that are hurting and wounded in a Father's blessing. Mm. Receive the blessing of your heavenly Father in heaven. Receive that love and that, that indwelling of the Spirit of God. Be filled with that. Be filled with that truth in the mighty name of Jesus. And know that God is reforging those broken swords of those who have gone before you and rendering them back into a strong and mighty sword that will break the back of the devil and break the power of darkness in your hands by his spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Mm, amen. amen. Well, son, I'm so oh. proud of you. I'm so proud of the man that you are, the man that you've become. And just thank God for his hand being on you and the ways to see uh, that he's working with you and the future that you have. And I'm so excited to, 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 to watch that and be a part. And so I bless you in the name of Jesus. I love you, son. Mm -hmm. I love you too, Dad. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Listen, those who are watching, watch on Thursday. Marston Zelensky is a mighty revivalist in Poland. This guy has he's 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 out of the Catholic Church and uh, he's he was a, a famous uh, was going to be a famous soccer star, and he gave it all up to go into ministry and to serve the Lord. And uh, he's a young man that is on fire for Jesus and passionate, filled with the Holy Spirit powerfully used of God. And I want to encourage you guys to uh, to watch. And, and Isaiah, get you know, a bunch of your friends to share that one and have them watch because he everybody calls him the Todd White of Poland. He's a, he is a, an anointed, anointed oh, that's so great. guy, young guy, uh, and just the spirit of God is all over this guy. But his name is Marson. And guys, seriously, you're not going to want to miss it. And then we're going to be again with uh, Mario Marillo Sunday night, like I have been. Great things happening. And then everybody, please pray. Uh, I put up this picture because Monday I'm going to be heading to Pakistan. Uh, we're right now in a campaign to raise money to give food uh, there. They're, 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 they're depriving the Christians of food, uh, giving it to the Muslims, but uh, they've been withholding from the Christians. There's some people that are making sure that it gets in the hands of Christians, but very few. And so, um, anyway, if you guys would, please make sure. And um, and uh, if the Lord speaks to you to help us, uh, you'll see links on my page uh, to sew into with that. But pray that all goes well. They still haven't given me my visa. They've had my passport. Hope I haven't been flagged. I've done some pretty bold things in Pakistan. Uh, and so, uh, but but pray because I want to go there for a week and, and uh, want to, Feed people and also uh, training about 2,000 to 2,500 underground church leaders and hitting the streets and just going to do some healing and crazy prophetic evangelism and all that. So anyway, pray that we get our my visa through and that uh, we're able to, um, we'll send the money there either way so they can feed people. But um, anyway, be praying about that. Again, son, thank you for joining me. Love you and so excited mm -hmm. what God's doing with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I love you too. All right.
All right, guys. Bless you guys. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus first, safety last. God bless you guys.